you are looking at two self-winding clock company movements. The movement on the left is from a master clock, and the movement on the right is from a subsidiary clock. In a recent video, I showed the components added to a self-winding clock company style F master clock movement so that it can send a synchronizing signal. In this video, we will look at the components needed for a self-winding clock company style F subsidiary clock movement to receive the hourly synchronizing signal. The synchronization involves mechanically moving the hands precisely to the hour. It may be needed if the subsidiary clock is slightly fast or slow. If the subsidiary clock is accurate, the hands will not move. For demonstration purposes, I have the subsidiary clock running one minute slow. Later you will see the master clock synchronize, that is, the subsidiary clock will show the exact master clock time. To demonstrate how this ingenious system works, I remove the movement from the indicated master clock on the right. It was used by the Canadian Pacific Railroad and dates to about 1918. Seconds beat self-winding master clocks with mercurial pendulums are very accurate. When equipped with a synchronizer, accuracy can be assured by checking with Naval Observatory time every day at noon. The subsidiary movement is from the clock in the inset photo. It was made for the military and is from about 1950. Subsidiary clocks are less precise timepieces. They are smaller and have shorter pendulums. This is compensated for through synchronization. This is a basic style F movement, and this is the way both these movements started. These and all self-winding clock company style F movements are spring-driven, pendulum-regulated, and the mainspring is rewound each 60 minutes. The rewinding is automatic. It requires only 3 volts of DC to rewind the mainspring. Today we use two 1.5 volt D-cell batteries and they will power these clocks for at least one year. No manual winding is ever needed. A basic F movement becomes a subsidiary clock by three modifications. First, the addition of a complete synchronizing apparatus. The synchronizing coils and the lever that positions the hands each hour are circled in this photo. The second modification is the cannon socket. The cannon socket carries the minute hand and makes one revolution per hour. On the front are two side projections that the lever arm uses to center the hands. On the back is a pin that unlocks a latch permitting correction only two minutes before to two minutes after the hour. And finally, this is the addition of the signal light. It was added just to confirm to customers that the synchronizing signal is being received. The light also necessitated a modification to clock dials so the light could protrude through the dial. Okay, so we've seen the changes needed so the clock can be synchronized. Now watch the synchronization in action. Two seconds before the hour, the master sends a synchronizing pulse to the subsidiary clock. There, the pulse activated the coils that moved the lever arm that precisely pointed the minute hand to the hour. So simple, but brilliant. A discussion of subsidiary clocks needs to include a comparison to secondary or slave clocks. There are misconceptions about whether the self-winding clock company's subsidiary clock is a slave clock. It is not. These are both subsidiary clocks. They are not slave clocks. All subsidiary clocks have a complete clock movement, and they have a self-contained power supply. Subsidiary clocks are connected by wire to a master clock, but only to be synchronized each hour. If disconnected, the clock still operates as a standalone clock. 
Slave clocks are different. They have only a partial clock works. The hands only advance when receiving an electrical pulse from the master clock. If there's a problem with the master clock or an interruption in the electrical connection, the slave clock is wrong. Watch both of these subsidiary clocks as they are synchronized. Not precise timepieces, but always correct. I will close with a final look at the synchronization. The hands have been removed so it's easier to see how the cannon socket carrying the minute hand is moved. The signal light is illuminated so there's no question that the synchronizing has been accomplished. This happens every hour precisely on the hour. I should add after making a big deal about the subsidiary clock not being a slave clock, that the self-winding clock company did make half-minute impulse slave clocks. If you're interested in me making a video about them, let me know. Thank you for watching. If this has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you wish to be notified when I post a new video, subscribe and check the notification bell. I have other vintage self-winding clock videos. You can find them by searching under my name or search self-winding clocks. Thanks again.